So I'll ask, uh, you know, uh, uh, Topher, tell us a little bit about the show, mm -hmm. how you came to write it. Um, um, then we'll just kind of go back and forth, and Jay can say how, you know, how happy or, 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 or deeply saddened he is that he's part of the production. <laughs> Whatever, you know, those things. He's ambivalent. Yeah. All right, say, look at the camera. Say we all said. Tell him, please. My name is Topher Payne, T-O-P-H-E-R-P-A-Y-N-E. My name is Jay Burns, J-A-Y-B-U-R-N-S. So, Topher, tell us a little bit about the show here. How did you come to write this? Uh, Perfect Arrangement is based on true events during the Red Scare of the early 1950s uh, when they were removing communist threats from government service. They expanded the definition of security risk to include people who were under suspicion for moral turpitude, which was a, you, an official euphemism for loose women and homosexuals, basically anybody you'd want to hang out with. And, um, and I was intrigued by the style of entertainment in the period versus what was actually going on in the early 1950s and wanted to tell a story that kind of combined those two influences. And that was how Perfect Arrangement was born. Well, it's interesting because it was all Ozzy and Harriet time. Oh, absolutely, and the world was in black and white. Yeah. And, um, and the entertainment of the time, Leave It to Beaver, Ozzy and Harriet, I Love Lucy, Burns and Allen, presented this picture of domestic bliss where everything was so perfectly arranged. And the idea that people who were concealing their true natures and true identities would use that as an inspiration uh, to be able to present their best selves to the world that the TV tropes become aspirational for them yeah. was really, really intriguing. Oh yeah, now Jay, now uh, tell us a little bit about your character. So my character is Bob Martindale. Uh, sure, my character is Bob Martindale. Uh, I'm a senior official at the State Department. You might say I am the witch hunter for McCarthyism. Ah. So I have done a job over the years of cleaning out the communists from the government and uh, in the beginning of the play, I am given a promotion and have my mandate expanded to folks that include me, my wife, and our neighbors. Oh my gosh, so you're in charge of cleaning out that dreaded lavender run. Right? I am, and that includes me. Oh my gosh, yeah. So um, now the rehearsal process, have you been up here, uh, you missed the rehearsal process because you came up for the opening. Right? That's right, yeah. So have you gotten a chance to see run-throughs or anything? Not a bit. I'll be a fresh audience member. Oh, wow. But you have seen the play perform. I have. I have. I do know the ending. <laughs> um, <laughs> and But that's the joy of being able to see multiple productions of a work. You know, theater is a living, breathing thing. Every new group of artists comes in and finds a completely new way of communicating the story. Yeah. Were you surprised when you found out that they'd made it into a musical? Oh, not, a, not at all. <laughs> not at all. So in interpreting the play, uh, you and, and, the, and the other players here, did you do a lot of research into the period? That we did, quite a bit. There's a book called The Lavender Scare, which is an excellent piece of source material. There's also been a lot of interviews done uh, for people that were either in charge of expelling people from the government or those who were expelled. And uh, it was a frightening time. I think it, it sounds like we got to wrap this up, but mm -hmm. um, I would love to talk to you guys after the show. One, possibly absolutely. Afterwards because there's a lot of really fascinating stuff here. I don't want to cut this off on because it sounds really cool. Yeah. But you guys got a show to open, so we do. <laughs> you guys do that. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. It's showtime. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Pleasure.